Hello everyone, this is JavaMonk, and welcome to the 21st episode, I believe. The 21st episode of my survival series. So, we're beginning the episode on this fairly successful villager breeder, which apparently some of these villagers got stuck, but that's fine. They are still producing the baby villagers. There's a whole bunch of baby villagers in here ready to grow up, and there's probably over 100 villagers in here, and even these villagers in here are breeding. So, pretty cool stuff. In this episode, I'm gonna kind of finish what I what I started last episode, which is get a bunch of the smaller projects done. So, this includes things like a cact. So, last episode I did a cactus farm. So, and I also did a villager sorter. And I also, what else did I do? I did a whole bunch of uh, where in the world are those, where are these zombies coming from? That is weird. I had this exact same problem in the, in just, just a little, just a little bit ago, I had this exact same problem in the front door of my, of my mansion. So, while I'm fighting these zombies, here's a little, I, I couldn't actually get my mic working at that time, so here's a little silent clip of what was going on with the zombies at the front door. Okay, so I've figured out where all those zombies are coming from. They're being attracted by the villagers, despite the fact that they're through this wall. And this is why I haven't run into this kind of zombie problem before, because I didn't have a villager, villager breeder in here before. But now that I do, there's zombies coming out from miles around to try to come get in here. I'm so happy I made this place mob-proof. But the reason they're able to get into the mansion is because of these stairs here. These stairs are messing everything up. They're, they're bypassing the mob proof door by essentially jumping up on the stairs and then hopping through. So, that's exactly what I need to fix. So, let's swap out those decorations. The stairs, the stairs look nice, but I'm gonna do some complete redecoration of the mansion pretty soon. But, for now, I'm going to put in cobblestone walls here instead. There. And there. Now, no zombies should be able to get through. It still fits with the theme. And, all should be well. So, thankfully zombies can't get to this villager breeder. So, yeah. It's pretty, pretty awesome, and now I know where those zombies are coming from. So now, let's get to an automatic melon and pumpkin farm. I've been missing one of those since, pretty much since I got into this, got into this mansion. Uh, there's problems with that plan. In order to make this, in order to make the pumpkin and melon farm that I want to make, I need some slime blocks. And that's all the slime blocks I have. So... By the sounds of things, I'm going to need to get the slime farm up and working. So, I don't want to go manually AFK at the slime farm again. Now, I have Vindicators in there, but what I need to test is whether or not slimes will actually get vengeance if Vindicators attack them. So, I'm going to do, if you don't know what I mean by that, I'm, I'm going to do some testing and then come back with an answer. Okay, let's do a quick test. If I put in the slime here, and then get a vindic have a Vindicator go after him, Vindicators will be able to kill the small slimes, and at least the medium-sized slimes. It won't be able to one-hit kill the big slimes, and that's what's worrying me, because and if, a, if the Johnny here can kill a mob in one hit, then the mob won't try to get vengeance. So... 
Now I'm going to splash a super weakness potion and a super slowness potion. And now let's wipe these effects off of me. So now Johnny here will be weak and slow, and in fact so weak that he won't be able to damage anything. See? I'm just going to keep on smacking him to death. I'll try, but not actually going to succeed unless I come in and punch him like I did. So what I need to, f what I want to find out is whether or not Johnny, whether or not a slime will try to get vengeance. Well, whether, yeah. So right now the slime keeps trying to beat up. Johnny's just trying to beat up the slime. But is the slime trying to go after Johnny? Now when a slime is attacking, it jumps faster than it normally would be. It doesn't seem to be... Hold on, let me try something. So, that's the speed a slime travels when it's not attacking something. If I give it a target to attack though, like an iron golem, then it will jump much faster at him. Watch. See? Jumping super fast at the slime here. So now, notice how the slimes are trying to attack the golem. Attack the iron golem. That's what I'm talking about when the mob tries to get vengeance. Because, because the golem could not kill the slimes in one hit, the slime will attack the golem. So, now what my question is, Thank you, Mr. Golem, for demonstrating my purpose, demonstrating what I wanted. So now the question is, will slimes try to do the same thing to a Vindicator? We've already seen that a Vindicator can kill a medium-sized slime in one hit, but it can't kill large slimes in one hit. So I'm just going to watch this guy for several minutes and see if that... Although the slime isn't exactly jumping any faster than he normally would be. So I've been watching these two bouncing with Johnny keep trying to beat him up and the slime keep trying to run away from Johnny. So this is quite interesting. So I actually gave the slime super strength. So if the slime did actually attack Johnny, he'd kill him pretty easily. But so far, as I've noticed, this slime is not trying, not even trying to attack Johnny. He's not jumping any faster than he normally would be, like slimes would if when they're attacking. So, with this, with this conclusion, with this overemphasized situation, and a con, I think we've determined a conclusion that. Will hopefully work in survival as well. And the conclusion is slimes won't try to get vengeance for a Johnny Vindicator attacking them. So here's the thing. If I were to kill the kill the slime kill the slimes. Like whoops. Almost killed almost killed Johnny there. Okay, let's just kill all these slimes. And so Let's actually test the other... I'm actually curious with the other mobs. See if they try to get vengeance from Johnny. Because if nothing tries to get vengeance from a Vindicator, then an all-purpose Vindicator farm, or all-purpose mob farm can be built with just a Vindicator. That'd be pretty overpowered. So let's see. Um, I know they won't attack Evokers or Vindicators. Or they won't attack Johnny's. But how about a, a a skeleton? Okay. Okay. That's pretty deterministic. The skeleton is actively trying to shoot Johnny. Yep. And the skeleton will win because Johnny has super weakness on him. Okay. So... I'm going to actually go th run through all the different mobs and see what Johnny will actually attack. I'm I'm genuinely I'm genuinely curious. For example, will they attack shulkers? Pretty stupid for them to do that, but 
it does seem that they do attack Shulkers. Okay, and Shulkers will try to hit him back. And in fact, succeed, because once again, Johnny has super weakness. One thing I haven't really prepared for, and one thing is that I'm going to need to move the Vindicators out of wherever I have them at the moment. So that means I can't be wearing Thorn's armor. This is my spare set. So I'm just going to put, put it in here. And over here, I have the No Thorns armor. So it has all the enchantments that I have on my other stuff. Uh-oh, my chestplate has thorns. That's not good. But my my boots also have Frostwalker. I'm going to need to get the thorns off. But you get. Well, that sucks. I'm going to put it on anyway. It's not, not thorns three on every, every piece of armor. It's just thorns two on the chestplate. Not too big of a deal. Where in the world are these zombies coming from? So, I'm gonna... I'm gonna begin work on moving the Vindicators to their new home, which is going to be pretty much smack in the middle of the slime farm. And their task will be to beat up all the slimes that come near them. Now, three Vindicators is not gonna be able to cover the enormous area that I have dug out. I'll show that enormous area later. When I, when I, once I get down there, but so in order to actually make it work, I'm going to need to attract the slimes, and one way to do that is to spawn an iron golem, and then keep them trapped. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, and I'm I'm going to trap him with some. Do I have him? Do I have some in here? Cobblestone walls. I guess I should bring a couple pistons with me while I'm at it. And let me get some buttons. That'll do. Alright, we're ready. So, again, probably overkill. But, you know what? That's fine. So, here we go. Just gonna sleep the night away. And then, off to the slime farm we go. So, the entrance to the slime farm goes right past all the pumpkin and melon farms that I'm going to, in this episode, hopefully, swap out with an automatic version. So, down, down here, this is the actual entrance to the slime farm, which I'm not going to even dare using with my Frostwalker boots. And this here is the pit where I dropped the Vindicators. Uh-oh, looks like they got out of the minecart. So, here we go. Let's just descend down through here. And is it going to turn into frosted ice? No. Okay. So now, through here is the door to which I have the Vindicators. So that is exactly what I'm going to, where I'm going to get those Vindicators out. Now, smack in the middle here, I'm going to put an iron golem. And I'm going to be able to tell that this is the middle. This is the middle chunk in the whole slime farm. So in the middle of the middle chunk, which is pretty much right here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, this is the middle. So in the middle of the middle chunk, this is where I'm going to put the iron golem. So I'm going to, I'm going to build up and leave enough space for an iron golem to fit. He'll fit. Good. I probably should have bought some pillowing blocks, but that's okay. So let's see. Now I can place in a, these cobblestone walls, at least some of them. And this is going to trap the iron golem, and the golem will attract all the slimes that spawn in this area. It'll attract them towards the middle, so the Vindicators will have no reason to leave this general area. And if they do, any slimes that spawn will attract them right back to this place. So here we go. Got the four iron blocks. Good, good. These are expensive. And hired help. Hurrah. Indeed, it is hired help. So, there we go. We now have an iron golem. Who will then, who will now work the slime farm. 
at least, yeah, he's going to be, his job will be to stand up there and stare at the slimes and make the slimes hop towards him. So that's pretty cool. And now we just got to bring the Vindicators into here. So before I do that, I should probably get some sort of safe access up to here. So, hmm, how am I going to do that? Uh, I have a, I have good enough armor here, except I do have thorns on that chest plate, so I'm a bit nervous, but should be okay. Hmm. I should probably put some sort of system here to actually collect the slime balls once they drop. I think I can do that with some hoppers and soul sand. So I'm just going to put soul sand all around the iron golem there. It will both slow down the slimes and the vindicators, but hoppers can suck items that suck up items that fall on top of soul sand. As far as I know, anyways. So that's what I'm going to do. That was expensive. So put it. I just put in. I just put in the hoppers for this, and now I'm going to put soul sand on top of these hoppers. So something something cool about soul sand. Miles will still spawn on top of soul sand. But it is just a little bit lower than other blocks. So hoppers can suck items through them, just like that item did. It's going to pop up in here anytime, any second now. And also, soul sand will slow, mo slow mobs down. And I believe that soul sand is considered a solid block, so you can place things like torches on top of them, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to take advantage of all of those aspects, and basically all the Vindicators will be fighting the slimes on top of the soul sand platform here. And sounds like I need to get more soul sand. So, yeah, that's the that's how the slime farm is going to work. And since this iron golem is going to attract all the slimes to this area, none should stray too far from this from here. <clears throat> and the Vindicators won't have won't have an excuse to stray too far from here because if they if they're not if no slimes have spawned they'll be attracted death to this iron golem so that's pretty cool and now I'm gonna get more soul sand and actually empty this chest finally it's been sitting here for the last several episodes there it goes it is now gone okay so yeah, I'm going to go gather some more soul sand, and I'll be back. Done. Got it. So now the soul sand platform is finished, and now I'm going to unload my, I'm going to unload my inventory before any any vindicator tries to kill me with all this stuff on me. And some creepers probably going to end up sneaking up on me up here. I'm also going to bring some potions like a health potion and other potions to and maybe regeneration potion that way I can also keep the vindicators alive in case they get damaged so more stuff okay I now have a system or at least an idea on how to get the vindicators in here in onto the soul sand part so I got some instant health potions a couple invisibility potions so I hope this is gonna work I'm not sure, uh, but I do have blocks to pillow out of the way if need be, so uh, hmm. I guess come at me one of you's, one of you Johnny's. Uh, can they fit to the door? I didn't think that would be a problem. Okay then, that's good to know, if indicators can't fit through doors. Uh, run. No? Um. Hello? Ah, yikes. Yikes. Jeez, these guys hit hard. Yikes. These guys hit hard even in... Even in diamond armor. Okay. You, sir, can run after me. Yikes. Yikes. Now run back and gather... Gather all his friends. Splash potion. No. I don't think there's a need. Okay, and then get out of range of that Vindicator. Get ready for the other Vindic- Yikes. Yikes. Uh-oh. 
I'm in trouble. Uh-oh. That's not good. Not good. Okay. And now we just run, run like a maniac, back to here. And none of them will chase me. Whew. That, that was interesting. Hmm. Could have sworn I dropped three Vindicators down here. Okay. Well. Whew. Well, that clears up this mess. So now there's really no need for this hole here. So I dug it all off for nothing. And now I have a bunch of Vindic- a couple of Vindicators over there to deal with any slimes that spawn here. Awesome. So now this area is not necessary. And if I do decide to turn this into an all-purpose mob farm, I can just drop them straight to the ceiling. Drop any other mobs straight to the ceiling. So, yay! It's working, and slimes should be able to spawn here, and they'll be dealt with by those two Vindicators. And the slimes should not try to get vengeance from the, vindic from the Vindicators attacking them. Awesome! That's one project out of the way. Let's move on to a automatic melanin pumpkin farm. Ah, uh, the pumpkin farm. A not very forgotten room, but just isn't used very often. And the reason why is because it's all this whole farm is manual. Or as I suppose you could call it personal touch, but that's just that's just sugarcoating a ma pretty massive problem. So here we have two manual designs for a melon and pumpkin farm. So since I have two of these rooms, ooh, I, I forgot about the fast walker. So since I have two of these rooms, I figured might as well take advantage of that. Have one room be melon, be a melon farm, and the other room be a pumpkin farm. So that is precisely what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make my own design for each of those. So let's just fill in all this water. Whoops. I should probably take off the summer. Yeah, I should take off the summer. It's getting a bit annoying. And it's also unnecessary. Okay. So the mob, this, this will be my mob catching armor. So, if I decide to catch mobs or transport them, then I'll wear this set. But if I'm doing anything else, I'll just wear this set of armor. So, pretty cool. Now, now we can just tear down whatever whatever's in this room right now and begin work on a automatic pumpkin and melon farm that I'm going to I'm going to design myself. Should be fun. So, at this point in the video, this is where I would probably show my mess of a test world, comment on how much of a mess it is, and then, and then show you a design I've been working on. But this episode is different because I'm going to be I'm going to be designing this farm on camera. Yeah, that's something I've never done before. So should be interesting. So I've been doing a little bit of research into the mechanics of a of pumpkin and melon farms, and you know what I forgot to bring with me? A hoe. So this this farm's not probably not gonna be the most efficient in the world, but the point is it's gonna be my design. So I'm gonna have two stems here, and since there's a pumpkin farm, it'll be growing pumpkins. So what's gonna end up happening is that a pumpkin will grow here once these stems have finished growing. And I'm going to tech that with an observer block, like that. Whoops. Assuming I don't trample the crops like I just did. Like some sort of idiot. So, yeah. And then from there, what I essentially want to do is I want some way to smash the... I want some way to smash the plant. So I'm, I think I'm going to do that by maybe putting a sticky piston here like this and so now if I do that then what could end, what's gonna end up happening is that 
This observer can detect the change, and then this piston will essentially use the observer block to smash the pumpkin and melon. Pumpkin or melon. So let me get one of those and see if that actually will end up happening. Let me just get a bunch of pumpkins. Let's see here. Will that actually happen? No. Okay. Let's see. What do I need? Um, maybe a redstone block to bud power the piston. Wait a minute. Those, that only works at the pistons facing up. Hmm. Um, uh, hmm. It's an interesting little redstone challenge here. So I do want the, I do want this, this thing growing. I want that to be detected with an observer block. So the question is, how am I going to break that? How am I going to break that? Melon or pumpkin. And then I guess the other question is, how am I going to collect that? However, I, I can just have a, I can just have a system of hopper minecarts going all around to this room to collect all the stuff. But yeah, how do, how would I, how would I detect that change? I like a, I like this. It's a good start, I think. This is how I. This is how I make the redstone contraptions. So, lots of trial and error. Let's see here. And especially since I did not design this at all in creative mode, it is especially challenging. So let's see. Hmm. I'd like some way for the, for this to be just for the observer, the same observer that detects the detects the crop growing to also be the one that smashes the pumpkin or melon. So let's see. I think I was on the right, right track with this. So now all I need is some way for the redstone signal from here to transfer up to the slime block to the piston. Hmm. Um... I have an idea on how to do this. Hmm. Yeah, I have an idea. Let me get some glazed glazed terracotta here. So I can place the redstone on top of this. Let me just get grab some redstone. So let's see. Over here. Perhaps if I do something like this. Then I can do something like that. And now this redstone can, needs to... I found the solution. So here's what's going to end up happening. I, just, I can just place an observer there. Two blocks like that and two redstone. So now, assuming this works... By the way, I've, I've moved the recording to a different location. So there might be some extra background noise, but that should be fine. It might... It's probably going to end up hearing some extra weird little noises. But let's test this. So if I say that a pumpkin grows here... Um, Uh-oh. That's not good. Okay. Different plan. If I do something like this, then observer blocks create a pulse that will actually make a piston drop its block. So, that should work, I hope. Let's test it. Okay. But now this observer should pulse, should have pulsed again. Okay then. Why is that? Oh. Bud powering. Somehow, I completely forgot about bud powering. This should work, right? I mean, I, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Let's test it. Bring in a pumpkin. Make sure I am recording. There we go. And now... Oh dear. Okay, you know what? Screw this. 
I'm just going to go with a standard-ish design. Still going to design it myself in survival, see if I can even do this. So here's the plan. I'm just going to have some normal pistons that will break the pumpkins that grow here. And this one observer will det actually, hmm, maybe I can just, yeah, I bet I can do this. So if I can, if I just extend this, this part here, all the way over, and then plant the pumpkin seeds here, then what I can do is have the individual observer blocks detect when each individual plant has grown. So let's just place some ice here. Transportable water, pretty nice. So there can be pumpkins that grow all along here, and then I can have observers detecting those pumpkins growing once they grow here, which of course the pistons are in the way. Here we go. So now, oh, facing the wrong way. Okay. So if I have a bunch of observers like this here, then I can wire each of these up to each individual piston. This will work, I think. So let's see here. Nope, need a shovel. So now all I need to do is wire up these, these observers to the pistons. And I'm thinking that it'd be, f it'd be just fine if I just have a catch-all kind of system where if one once one pumpkin grows it will it will destroy all of the it will extend all the pistons so that's what I'm gonna do right here you can just sprinkle some redstone dust like this nice and simple question is now will it work let's see if I jump in here and place a pumpkin here oh no of course it doesn't. Okay then. Still gotta figure some things out. And this is just gonna keep firing off otherwise. Hmm. I'm about to give up on this and just put on some sort of redstone clock that every every five minutes or so p breaks any pumpkins or melons that po could have possibly grown here. It'd be a be kind of a wouldn't be very, <clears throat> wouldn't be very nice, but I'm thinking I'm just, I might just have to do that. Unless, oh, cauldrons. Maybe that can, maybe that'll work. I'll get some sticky pistons and try that. So this is the kind of system I was thinking of. So essentially the observer powers this piston, which will then extend this cauldron up. And once I fill it with water, it'll activate this comparator, which will then power the piston. So, I'm wondering if that's actually going to fix the problem, or if it's going to end up causing more problems. So we still now, now we've kind of returned to, a, to the original idea of a, of a one pumpkin per thing kind of system. So if I place a pumpkin here. Okay. Looks like we still got problems. Hmm. How do you fix this? Yeah, now it's now it's just going now it's just going crazy. It's gonna be super hard to break these things too. Okay. There we go. Okay. I suppose I could have just broken the comparators, but okay, this isn't gonna work. Okay, we're starting over. This, that idea did not work at all. So, this new grand plan involves something that kind of goes like this. Basically, I'm going to have the stems and the pumpkins in kind of a checkerboard pattern. So this whole thing will be covered in dirt, and maybe I can occasionally sprinkle in some water. So... Let's see. Basically, I'm going to have a checkerboard kind of like this. So it's going to it's going to be kind of checkerboarding the 
pumpkin the pumpkin seeds in the in the farmland. So here we go. I can do this because offhand is awesome. There we go. And perhaps here and there I can just sprinkle in some water, such as here. Oops, nope, not that. I meant to place that in. There we go. So now it should hydrate all this farmland and the stem should grow. Let's see, what else, what else should I grab? I suppose I can have upwards facing pistons facing down here, or downwards facing pistons, which is going to be kind of hard to place now that I have all this dirt in, but that's okay. I'll just destroy the water there. And as a matter of fact, I don't want it to melt. So let's just dig all this back up. So yes, I am using my diamond hoe on this, despite the fact that I've kind of, in the past, said how much of a stupid idea a diamond hoe is. But, there is an advancement for using up a full diamond hoe. And that is the advancement I'm actually trying to go for. And as a matter of fact, I can just dig out some of this floor here. So that way I can stack this thing. So that way I can stack this. Alright, still got plenty of work ahead of me, and I'll I'll check back on you later once I have the floor dug out, dug out, and at least an idea of what I'm doing. Now that is quite the sight to see. So at the moment, this is the this is the current state of the pumpkin and melon the pumpkin farm, not melons, but just pumpkins. I have the checkerboard with a whole bunch of pistons that are going to that are going to extend where the pumpkin would grow. So now I can just block this off and just spray redstone all over the place here. In fact, I should probably do that on a, a layer above like this. And actually, I can just do I can just place the redstone on top of the place the blocks on top of the pistons. Since even though you can place redstone on top of pistons like this, they will the redstone will pop off once the pistons extend. And that's not good. So I'm just going to do this. I'm, I am going to block off this room, just as I did with the cactus farm. Because after I build this farm, there's going to be absolutely no need to go in here. And in fact, I'll put in a switch to shut off the farm. So this is going to be... This farm is going to work on a on a clock rather than individ rather than when a plant when the plant actually grows. So I could just sprinkle some redstone over the place here, and it should be fine. You just break some of that, and this room this room will be pretty much spawn proof too. So the lighting won't really be necessary, but I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it just so that all of you can see what's going on. I'm pretty much just going to light it up for visibility purposes. And holy cow, that's a lot of redstone needed. But that's fine, because the witch farm... Well, first off, I already have gazillions of redstone. And plus, the witch farm will soon be giving me even more than that. So if I power this here, then... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Cool. So basically I just need to power all of all of these redstone lines here. And then it should be good. I should be just fine. Now all I need is something to collect the pumpkins once, they, once they're broken. I'm just going to use the hopper minecart for that. And also I'm going to need a... Whoops. I'm also going to need some sort of clock to actually set the farm off and harvest it. So here's what the redstone to control this is going to look like. I'm just going to have a whole bunch of repeaters here because it's redstone and pretty soon I'm going to have infinite amounts of it, so I don't care. Let's see. So over here, 
what I need is a I'm gonna put in a hopper clock so let me just sprinkle some redstone over here boop, 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 just like that so now what I'm gonna need is some sort of hopper clock over here and the way I'm going to do that I guess I could just have the redstone block needed for it to go here. Nah, it's not gonna work. Um, how about the main input be over here? So let's see. The hopper clock. Hmm. How am I actually gonna do this? Uh, hmm. How am I supposed to fit a fit one of those Etho hopper clocks over here? Maybe like this, I suppose. Yeah, that could work. In fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Let's see now. So if I do that, and something like this, yeah, that should work. So now if I just do that, and I can place a redstone torch on the side here, that way it'll be off most of the time, and it'll just power on briefly. So now I can just do something like that, and put the just put the pistons on top of uh, on top of the hoppers, as opposed to the side like a standard design. So let's see, stick pistons go not facing that way. So pretty standard hopper clock built by Etho, Ethos Lab. Oop. And now, let's see. Just need a redstone block to go in between here. And now I can just dump as dump in here as many items as I want. So let's go 16 items. That should activate, activate the clock. So at this point, all I need is a redstone torch. So let me just grab, grab one of those. Here it is. Okay. And up we go. Up to the redstone here. There we go. And then break that. And there we go. Sweet. Okay. So it looks like this is working. And quite nicely too. Make sure it stretches all the way out to the, to the edges here. Indeed it does. Now the question is, is, is it actually powering the pistons? I don't see why it wouldn't. It is. Awesome. So, let's see. Now what I need is to put in some lights in here. Because otherwise, those stems aren't going to grow. I also need to put in an off switch here. So I can put in the off switch. I guess I can just attach it to this, to this part here. So let's see. The switch can be there. And all I gotta do is just sprinkle some redstone wiring to actually make it possible to shut this thing off. Because after all, every time that thing is, every time that thing powers, it's gonna cause a little bit of lag. So let's see. I don't have a lever. That's right. Levers are probably the simplest, simplest things to craft. That's, that are that is redstone related. Seriously, it's just cobblestone and sticks. All right, and now the lever goes there. Let's see. Now to actually make it an off switch. I can just do something along the lines of... It's in the way. Hmm. Hey, you know what? I just came up with a super simple way to do this. Here. I can just do that. Now the pistons will always be down. Yep. The pistons will always be down, so no matter... So this half o'clock can just... Keep going until it's blue in the face, and nothing's going to happen. Because pumpkins are not going to be able to grow. Awesome. 
So now I just I just need to find a way to put bring light to that place. Okay. Lights are now in here and those stems should begin growing now. So at this point, all I need is some way to collect the pumpkins that are broken here. So let's see. Suppose I can just do that by running some running some rails through here and send a hopper minecart on its way to collect all of the pumpkins that are broken here. And I can just avoid the glowstone because I put the that's why I put the water is right under right on top of the glowstone. I put the glowstone under the water. Uh oh. Get that cobblestone back. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I'll be back when something interesting happens or I finish or I finish this. Okay, so I now have the rail system put in place. So at this point, let me just show it to you what's going on. I have the rails dipping under the glowstone. I didn't want to didn't want to go around. It was just too painful to do that. So now, let's test and see in see if the hopper minecart that I put under there will actually make it all the way around and back. Here we go. Okay. Sounds like we got a problem already. Go. All right. Let's check. Okay. Uh oh. And it's getting stuck there. Okay. Hmm. Suppose I can fix this by just making, moving this redstone block over here. And then making it dip down one block before whatever's going on there. Uh, hold on. Let me recraft that top of mine coat. My inventory is an absolute disaster. Let's see. That should work now. So now for replacing all the rails that I broke. Hopefully none of these go do any weird connections here. Okay, nice. Now I can just place this rail line back in. Got to put the redstone block back in too. There we go. Okay. Time for another test. Here we go. That's on my, the rail line is in. Time to test the hopper minecart. Will it make it? Okay, it's making it. So far. Now the question is, will it bounce back? And it does. Awesome. Okay. And it's stuck again. Great. And this time coming from the other direction. Okay then. Here we go. Now it should work. Um, uh-oh. Better place this back in. Oh, it's stuck again. Okay. Sounds like we've got some problems here. I'm wondering if I can actually fix these on camera. Let's see here. If I place a redstone block there, now this part should be powered. So now the hopper minecart's getting stuck over here. Which I can fix pretty easily, I think. Assuming I could actually... Assuming my inventory wasn't an absolute mess, like it is right now. Okay. So it looks to me like we need to make this dip down one block before the actual turn here. Otherwise it's going to get stuck. There we go. So now if I place a hopper minecart there, it should not get stuck anywhere. Okay. And it's not getting stuck. Nice. So now I can just place this back in. Just like so. And now push the hopper minecart on its way. Awesome. Now all I need is an unloading station right here. Um, hopper minecart unloader. 
Here we go. I built this in... I built this a couple episodes ago, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm wondering why there's so much lag. Is it the villagers? Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm gonna put in the hopper... the minecart unloading station, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I have the hopper minecart unloading station. So now if I drop a whole bunch of items in here, the rail should turn off until items stop flowing through. In which case, the rail should turn on. Let's check. There we go. And 22 pumpkins should be in here. Whew. Wow. So much work for just one farm. And we still got a melon farm to build. But this is working quite well. So... Now, I feel comfortable with sending this hopper minecart on its way. Nice. And now we can also close this area off, because I no longer need to go in here. As soon as those stems grow, I should be getting nice large amounts of pumpkins. Amazing. Let's build the melon farm now. Now that we know what we're doing. The melon farm should be much easier to do now that we know what we're doing, right? I hope. I really, really hope so. Those are famous last words, eh? So, I'm right now doing exactly what I was doing with the... Uh, when I was putting, putting together a pumpkin farm, except instead of trying to design our own thing, we're just going to do exactly what we were doing with the, with the pumpkin farm. I'm really running low on time on with this episode, so... And I hate ghost blocks. If there's one bug in the game that Minecraft should... That, that Mojang should fix, or at least do its best with fixing, is ghost blocks. It'll probably be outrageously difficult to fix ghost blocks of every kind, but at least the... Uh, at least the mining ghost blocks and slime block ghost blocks. Like the ghost blocks created from mining and from from the flying machines. Those two are the most annoying, and they're also probably the easiest to fix. So, um, if anybody important important like from from Mojang or something is watching this, please fix fix those bo ghost blocks and maybe other types if if you want as well. I mean, sure, ghost blocks might be used for super technical purposes, but ghost, they're just annoying. Please remove them. Okay, so now that that little rant is over, let's finish digging this thing out. So, let's see. This, this melon farm is going to be no different from the pumpkin farm, because melons grow with exactly the same mechanics as pumpkins do. The only difference, really, is the fact that Melons, are b when melons get broken, they break into slices, which you then have to bulk craft, which you then have to craft into melon blocks if you want them, if you want to store them in massive quantities. So, even though the farm that I just built is probably not the most efficient in the world, I really don't care, because the only, the only place I'm really going to be bringing the melons is to villagers. And with villagers, you really don't need gargantuan amounts of the. You really don't need gargantuan amounts of melons or pumpkins. And this farm block is trying to eat me. There we go. All right. So here we go. Let's let's do this. All right. So here we are again, doing this, trying to hoe in a checkerboard fatter pattern while being pushed by water. Thank you, Depth Strider Boots. Thank you, Depth Strider Enchantment, for keeping my sanity as I'm doing this. Yeah. I do intend on completely using up this diamond hoe eventually. And it's going to be much harder to do that since I enchanted it with Unbreaking 2. And I did this not real and completely forgetting about the fact that there was an advancement. I'm not about to remove that enchantment, because 
I've already done a lot of work on, on this hoe. So, yeah. I should probably be planting this stuff while I'm while I'm doing this, shouldn't I? And while I'm at it, I'm, uh, I might as well also bone meal all these stems so that I don't have to worry about it later. Lots of lessons learned from making the pumpkin farm. So might as well do all this stuff while I, while I still have access to it. For example, I should probably put in the glowstone underneath the water. That would be a smart thing to do that I almost forgot to do. Yeah. Better do that. I'll see you, I'll get back to you a little bit later once I get a bit of this done. And I built all of this up and complete, once again, completely forgot about the hopper minecarts. You know what? That's fine. I'm not about to go redoing the work. Or undoing all this work and then redoing it. Just so that I can... Just so that it's easier to place the rails in. Instead, I'm just gonna keep on going as usual and do what I did for the pumpkin farm. Hopefully minus all the mistakes. So, yeah, it's a bit of a learning process, but that's fine. I've never actually designed a pumpkin and melon farm, and I've also never done imp never done improvised redstone on camera, so that's pretty cool. At least, especially not redstone in, in survival, improvised redstone in survival. I've done it, I've actually done that once in a, one of the tutorials that I did, where I realized there was a problem. I think it was the Shulkerbox storage system where I did that. Where I realized there was a problem with the storage system that I was designing. So then, it, it's really kind of interesting. Because I figured out the fact that I, that I made a mistake and I knew exactly how to fix it. So in the tutorial for the Shulkerbox storage system, I just implemented the fix and then hoped it worked. And it did. So that was one of those cases where I improvised redstone without actually and it looked like, uh, at least I hoped, it looked like I, it wasn't improvised at all. So that was quite interesting. Interesting little, interesting little trivia. So here we go. Just gotta squirt the redstone all over the place here. The redstone really does kind of, really kind of looks like blood. <laughs> I could, I could make some sort of horror scene using redstone. Like have some. Use redstone to power the, some mood lighting, and also use it as, for a double function to make it look like blood. I could. It's pretty cool all the different things you can use redstone for, even even if you're not a redstoner. We're on the final steps of the actual farm here. So there we go. Got the two hoppers facing each other. I need a computer. So I'm right now placing in the redstone clock to make this whole thing work. There we go. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera a bit too much. Doesn't help that there's this weird lag going on. Got that piston. Hold on. That piston just duplicated itself. That was weird. And then, did you see that? I had three pistons in my inventory, but the third one was duplicated and then it just disappeared. Weird. Yeah, I, I don't understand the duplication stuff. So let's see. I actually increased the length of the clock for the pumpkin farm. Increased it from like 15 seconds to I think about 2 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do here as well. I just need 2 snacks of something random. Rotten flesh. I mean, I know I can trade trade rotten flesh with villagers and all, but it's it's just not very useful. Here we go. Two stacks. Two stacks, I says. There we go. And now... Awesome. Okay. And now all I need is... 
Now all I need to put in is the Hopper, Hopper Minecart system. So that should be pretty easy to do now that I know what I'm doing. Here we go, just gotta add some powered rails, a couple normal rails. Again, probably overkill. I do that a lot, where I just gather way too many materials for what I need. Actually, I don't think that's enough. That'll do it. And then that'll do. Alright, so all I gotta do now is place in the rail system, and since I have the glowstone under the water, I can avoid the water from the... make sure the rails don't touch the water, which is good because rails and water don't mix... Um, they mix very, very well in a dis very destructive way. Yeah, kind of like water and redstone. They mix destructively well. So let's see. I need the hopper minecart to go under here. Alright, I'll be back once I have a rail system in place. So now that I more or less know what I'm doing, I can show you the process of me putting up the rail system. So I can just, I just place a whole bunch of redstone blocks like this, all the way up to the dirt edge. I mined out this little bit here so that I can walk past all the stuff going on. So now I just place some cobblestone here, because I didn't feel like spending gold blocks on this. Even though I could put gold blocks here, I don't think there's a need. I have plenty of cobblestone anyway, and besides, I, I can make a cobblestone generator pretty, pretty easily. So now, since this is the far corner, I can, I can just have the redstone trail off like this. Let the rails trail off like this, so that when the minecart comes over here, it bounces off this wall here. The rest of these, however, need to be need to have the curves and U-turns. So here's one. Whoops. Didn't mean to place that rail there. So there we go. We got the full full slice done and didn't mean to put that there. Let's get some get some more rails here. So rails. I've I've had a lot of experience with rails, and they actually, it's not because of the loop de doop that I built. Not at all. One thing that I really, really enjoy doing is building roller coasters. And generally speaking, these roller coasters have all sorts of different elements like drops and loop de doops, and not none nearly as big as the one that I showed in the loop de doop video that I made. But the thing is, the these roller coasters, I kind of stopped working on them after after I started this YouTube channel because I I found redstone quite appealing and well I haven't I have a whole bunch of incomplete roller coasters that I'd like to get back to working on so and I also have plenty of other roller coasters that I built previously but have not showcased here yet so what I want to hear from you guys is would you like to see the roller coasters? So, please let me know in the comments, and I will, I'll see about making the uh, video on the different roller coasters. Now these roller coasters that I've made, pretty much every single one of them, goes between all three of the dimensions, and also they go through the natural terrain. So, that's, that's something interesting. Now, I also built four Rube Goldberg machines. One of which doesn't really work, because the latest update kind of broke it. But, and I'm working on a, f I started work on a fifth one a while ago, but then kind of stopped. So, would you like me to see the, would you like to see the Rube Goldberg machines? I'd be happy to make the videos. So, yeah, things you might see from me in the future is... Roller coasters and Rube Goldberg machines. Okay, so now this excuse me, this minecart system is in place, and now I can just put in a hopper minecart. There we go, and let's test this thing out. See if the minecart, if the hopper minecart, will be able to make it all the way over, over to the other side and then all the way back. Okay. 
Let's see its progress. Ooh, it made it already. Nice. And it's coming back. Diving up and over the glowstone. Very nice. Let me just break this rail. So it stops here. Awesome. It works. So now all I need is a hopper minecart unloader right here. EGAT. Um, I don't want this redstone to be merging with the rails there. I didn't have that problem with the pumpkin farm because there was no redstone over here. But over here, it might doing what I wanted to do might cause some problems. Okay, no big deal. I'm just gonna put the unloader right here. So let's see. Over here, I can put the chest. Um, assuming I had them. I'm gonna just grab, uh, grab the chest and a couple hoppers. Hoppers are still outrageously expensive until I get an iron farm, in which case they won't be so expensive anymore. Let's see. Um, oh, I need a crafting table. Yeah, there we go. Now I can craft a chest. Jolly good. I'm so happy the recipe book was put in place because even though I've memorized most of the crafting recipes, it's, I still end up forgetting them, like, I still can't remember the recipes for a detector rail or a, or a powered rail, and I still have no idea how to craft any of the prismarine blocks. But the recipe book helped with that. Now I know how to craft everything. And there's no need to reference the wiki. Hooray. Let's see now. There we go. And so now I need a comparator and a redstone torch. And also the recipe book made bulk crafting much faster and easier, which I absolutely love because in this case I'm going to end up having gargantuan amounts of melon slices, so I'm going to need to bulk craft them pretty quickly. There we go. And I do remember how to how to make one of these. From I remember from the when I built the the skeleton skeleton farm a couple episodes ago there we go and bam there we go this should work now so let's see if I have a hopper minecart going through and it picks up something like a whole bunch of rails the minecart should be able to just run right over the rails and collect them and then unload them and dump them into this chest Let's see, where's the mic cut? Come on. There we go. Okay, nice. And it's dumping all the... Dumping the rails that I put in here. Unloading them from the hopper mine cut. And pretty soon, this thing should be finished unloading. Let me just help it out a little. And then it should be sent on its way. Just like that. Awesome. Amazing. So now the farm can be turned on. And we can block this area off because it is no longer necessary. Hooray. Although I'm thinking maybe moving this, moving the chest all the way into the mansion like this. That way, that way I can completely block things off. Even though it'll cost an extra hopper. Yeah, there we go. So now I can just block this in place off, cover it up with a wall, just as I did with the pumpkin farm. Whoops, don't fall in. Alright. So both the pumpkin farm, both the pumpkin farm and the melon farm are currently active, and they should be working now. Because now all the stems are being, had bone meal applied to them. So that's nice. And once I finish covering up that wall, I think it'll be the end of the episode. So, hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed this enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know. And I'll check back on you next Friday. Alright, 
See you then. Bye.